This demo video is on customizing Informix HQ. So there are two new customization features in 1410X V2, and those are the ability to create custom dashboards and custom SQL sensors. Most of this video will be a demo of actually walking through the process of creating these custom objects in HQ, but let's talk about each feature in turn before we jump into the demo. Custom dashboards allow you to define custom UI pages that show you exactly the Informix monitoring data that you want to see. You can create single server dashboards or multi-server dashboards. You define the monitoring graphs you want to see. In 1410XC2, the custom dashboards are entirely based on sensor data that we pull from the repository. You can drag, drop, resize, select the colors, edit the labels, of your graph panels to customize the look and feel of your dashboard. And once a dashboard is created, you can dynamically change the set of servers that are loaded into the dashboard. The second feature is custom SQL sensors. This allows you to customize exactly what the Informix HQ agent collects about your database server. The custom sensors are entirely SQL based, but it means that any SQL query that can be run against the SysMaster database can now be turned into a sensor. We have built an easy to use UI for defining sensors that I'll walk you through the process as well as giving you a preview of the sensor data. Once your custom SQL sensor is created, it flows right into the rest of Informix HQ so you can create alerts on it or you can add them to your custom dashboards. So now I have a video that I've recorded of me creating a few custom dashboards and some custom SQL sensors. So I'm going to play that video right now and narrate um, the process as it goes. So the custom dashboards and custom SQL sensors feature is new to 1410XC2, but you will now see a dashboards link on the menu that you can use to create new dashboards or to view any previous ones that you've already created. So we're going to start by walking through creating a dashboard. To start, you will have to select one or more servers. Um, this allows us to preview the dashboard as you're building it so you can see exactly how it'll look. So I've selected one server because we're going to start by creating a single server dashboard. And then you just add one or more panels to your dashboard. So all the panels are sensor based. So they're all going to be line graphs of the history of sensor metrics. So you start by selecting the data source of your panel, which is going to be a sensor, or it could be one or more sensors. So I added a sensor, and then I can choose one or more metrics from that sensor. So I can choose to graph all of the metrics in my panel, or I can pick a particular one. Let's just do all metrics to start with. There is a series tab where you can define attributes about the various series. So you can edit the labels. So here I'm just deleting the session statistics sensor name since that's duplicated across all three. You can define the axis, whether um, that metric is uses the left or right axis. Vormix HQ will auto configure that based on your sensor definition. So in most cases, you won't have to change that, but you do have the ability if you would like. You can also change the series colors. So if you want to edit the look and feel of how this graph will look, you can um, change the colors as well. On the chart tab, we allow you to configure the axes, the, the type or the unit, so whether it's bytes or a number or a percentage, min and max, the labels of your axes. Again, a lot of these things will be auto configured as best we can based on the sensor definition, but if you have customizations or you have labels you want to add, you can go ahead and add those. And then when you click back, your panel will be shown on your dashboard and you can drag it, resize it, um, change the layout and make it as big or small as you would like. And then the idea is you just keep adding as many panels as you wanna see. So we'll go through this process of, again and add another sensor metric. Um, for this second one, let's choose the operating system CPU. Um, we'll just graph all metrics again. So we'll gra we're graphing the idle system user and weight CPU percentages. And we'll just take all of the, the rest of the defaults because that's set up pretty well based on the um, sensor definition. And let's add a third panel here. 
And again, we'll just you select the sensor you're interested in. So let's put operating system memory right next, next to the operating system CPU. So here um, I'm showing how you can choose individual metrics. So if you didn't want to graph all metrics because, you know, in this example, there's six different metrics and that's maybe too much to consume in a graph and you really only care about total and used memory, you can absolutely just pick those metrics. And you can graph metrics from different sensors on the same graph. So I had taken two operating system memory metrics, but I could take metrics from two different sensors and graph them on the same graph. So um, you, can get, you should give your dashboard a name so you can identify it later when you want to open it. And you can optionally save a default server. What that means is when you open the dashboard, it'll load that server by default. If you don't have a default server, it'll ask you what server when you load the dashboard. There are time controls at the top that allow you to zoom out in time, zoom in or scroll back in time um, to you know, see whatever amount of history is of interest to you. We also support a selection and a drag on the graph itself to zoom in to a particular time slice. You will notice that we keep all of the graphs panels on the dashboard in sync. Um, the idea is if you have an anomaly in one of your metrics, you probably are interested in what else is going on in the database server at that same time. So now we're gonna de define another dashboard and this time um, we'll go through a multi-server dashboard. You can define up to five servers on a single dashboard and the only difference for a multi-server dashboard is that server select. And you can choose for each panel, whether you graph all servers on the same panel or whether you um, tie a particular panel to one server. So here I'm using the session statistic metric again, but I'm only doing one. And session statistics center again, but only one metric. And I'm changing my series names to be just the server name using that placeholder we have. And now I have a panel that graphs the number of sessions for each database server and it graphs them on top of each other in the same graph. So I can see how these two servers behave um, in terms of the number of sessions over time and I can see them right alongside each other. All right, so the first panel we added, we show how you can graph multiple servers in the same graph. Again, we could select, you could add up to five servers in the dashboards. So you can have up to five servers in a particular graph. You can also tie a panel to one of the servers in your server set. So this is this panel I'm adding. I'm saying the first server in my list, I'm, I'm going to tie this panel always to the first server in my list. And here I can add, again, one or more sensor metrics to the graph. Um, the reason you might want to tie um, a graph to a particular server is if you're trying to graph a sensor with multiple metrics, it may be too busy to graph all of the servers with multiple metrics in the same graph. So you may create a panel for a particular server. And then another panel you could put, for example, right next to it and tie it to a different server. So now I will get two graphs side by side. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm now gonna select the second server and have the exact same panel. And then on my dashboard, I'll have them side by side. So now I will have session memory for server one um, compared to map session memory, both the average and max session memory for server two next to each other. Um, so you know, because in some cases that just may be an easier way of visualizing the particular metrics you're interested in. So for multi-server dashboards, you have the same option of saving a default server list if you don't want to have to define that every time you open the dashboard. Um, and you have the same time controls where you can zoom back in time to an entire week or drag and drop or, you know, drag and select to zoom in. Um, and always make sure to give your dashboards a name. Otherwise, they will be hard to identify later on. So now we're going to switch gears and 
talk about the custom SQL sensors. So on the system settings page, there is a sensor management page where you can define custom SQL sensors. So click create sensor. And then we have this form that walk you, walks you through the process. So all of our SQL sensors are based on a SQL statement you can run against SysMaster. So you have to select a server so we can preview that data. And then you provide us the SQL statement and click run. We will run that SQL on the server and then show you the data preview at the bottom. We provide some data configuration options. For example, if you have a primary key column, so if your query was pulling um, statistics about your DB spaces, your DB space name or number might be your primary key. Then you move to a metrics tab where you define each of the metrics. Each of the columns in your query will become a metric. So you can give it a, a display name, kind of a more human readable name. You can define an optionally define a unit. The unit per site percent or bytes is what we support. Just helps with formatting the graph when, or formatting the data when we graph it. And then um, you define attributes about your sensor. You have to give it a unique ID, a display name, and a description is helpful um, for you later on when you're looking to add sensors to your monitoring profile. Your description can describe exactly what that sensor monitors. You can provide a default run interval for your sensor and then a default data retention interval. The last tab here will just preview um, the sensor. We will store it as JSON, so if you want to review all the fields, you can do it here, and then you just confirm that you want to save it. So I created one a custom sensor that monitored session wait times, both IO and lock wait times. We're going to go through the process of defining another one here. Um, I have a query that I'll select the number of commits that have been run on the server. So this is an increase, a statistic that increases over time. The database, the database stores the number of commits since um, the database started or it's a reset. So here I want a delta metric. So a delta metric tells this agent that you compute a delta between the current reading and the previous re reading and then it stores that delta divided by the number of seconds so delta metrics are going to be a per second delta um, so I will get effectively the number of commits per second when this sensor is deployed. So I'm going to go through and do one more custom SQL sensor now with rollbacks so uh, similar to commits the database Database stores the number of rollbacks since it last started or its statistics were reset. So I can create a delta metric that will capture the number of rollbacks per second happening on my system. So again, make sure to select the delta metric, which will compute a delta per second. And then you have to define the base attributes about the sensor. And then you have a SQL sensor that will monitor the rollbacks per second as well as the commits per second going on on your database server. So that's a quick process of defining three SQL sensors. You can obviously go through and grab a lot of data off, out of SysMaster and have the Formix HQ monitor all of that. Once SQL sensors are defined, custom sensors, when you go to a monitoring profile to select sensors, your custom sensors just show up in the list. They look the same as any other sensor and the process of adding them and setting the run interval or data retention interval is the same as any other sensor. Um, essentially, Informix HQ, once defined, treats custom SQL sensors the same as any others, which also means you can then go to the alerting page and create alerts based on custom sensors. And it means that when you go to your dashboard, you can define dashboards that visualize your custom SQL sensors. So the reason these two customization features flow into each other is that um, when you're creating a custom sensor, it is logical that you will probably want to visualize that the data that your uh, sensor is capturing. So um, we absolutely kind of lump these features together uh, so that you have a way of visualizing your custom sensors. So any SQL sensor that you add and then add to your monitoring profile to have the agent monitor it, you can thus create a dashboard that visualizes that data being connected or being collected by the agent. So here I just went through, um, selected my comp commits and rollbacks, put them in the same panel, and you can see that it's started capturing this data um, for my server. 
And we'll just do one more and I'll show you the session wait times sensor that I added. So again, since it's just a regular sensor, once defined, it shows up on the list the same as the others and I can add it. Um, I have two metrics and we'll just gra graph both the average IO and average lock wait time for my sessions. And then um, let's actually go ahead, since I already have a sessions graph, um, move it up to the top so it's right next to the other session one, session graph, session panel. Um, and this is just kind of showing you that we've tried to give you the maximum amount of flexibility in terms of laying out your dashboard so that you can show as much or as little um, in a single page as uh, makes sense to you and your monitoring environment. Um, and then changing the time slice, I only have a couple of minutes of data for these new sensors. So if I zoom into five minutes, you can see it started to collect um, data for those new sensors. So that is the end of the customization video for 1410XC2. And um, we've tried to give a lot of flexibility in terms of defining what your agent monitors and also being able to visualize that in the UI. And we will continue to build on some of these features in next releases, particularly in dashboards. We will be adding um, more uh, panel options so you can even further customize the look and feel of your dashboard. So keep an eye out uh, for that in future releases. Thanks for watching.